Welcome to Foldit Lab Report number 11. I am BKEP and we're back at the IPD. I'm here at the Institute for Protein Design, uh, at least six feet away from my colleague Ian H. We are still working from home as much as possible, but coming into the lab occasionally for experiments and other work. If you're new to Foldit, welcome. We do these monthly lab reports to update players on recent events and ongoing research with Foldit. First up, news. This month, we announced a upcoming research paper that uses the work of Foldit players. This research was done uh, here at the Baker Lab at UW in collaboration with the Ovchinnikov Lab at Harvard. These scientists did some close analysis of Foldit designs and used that analysis to develop a new method for protein design using deep learning. To make sense of this breakthrough, we have to think about a concept called energy landscapes. An energy landscape is like a map of all the possible folds that a protein chain can fold into. Some of the folds in this landscape are more stable than others. That is, they have a better energy. Traditionally in protein design, we first choose a desired structure and then we change the sequence to try to optimize the energy and lock in that structure. But we ignore the rest of the energy landscape. This is what we do in Foldit. The score at the top of your Foldit screen reflects the energy of the desired target that's on your screen, but it doesn't tell you anything about the rest of the energy landscape or other off-target folds. So could your protein sequence fold into a completely different shape with an even better energy? That's something that we don't consider in Foldit, but sometimes Foldit designs really do fold into off-target structures. So. The new method uses a machine learning algorithm called TR Rosetta, which can optimize the entire energy landscape of a protein being designed. So how did they do it? First, the researchers did a deep analysis of the energy landscapes for over 4,000 protein designs by Foldit players. And they showed that TR Rosetta could predict problematic energy landscapes that would lead to misfolding. Next, they showed that TR Rosetta could redesign a protein to give it a better energy landscape. This looks like a promising way to improve designs that come out of the computer. Check out the Foldit blog for more details about this paper. We want to point out that Foldit designs were key to developing this new method. This is one of the many ways that Foldit gameplay helps scientific research. Your designs can be useful for science even outside of the normal puzzles for which they were intended. Foldit players will be listed as authors on this paper. If you've played any of our monomer design puzzles on Foldit and you'd like to be included on the paper, please fill out the survey below. Puzzle updates. This month we have three puzzle updates. The first two are our coronavirus binder design and our coronavirus anti-inflammatory binder design puzzles. For both of these, we are still working behind the scenes to try and add new Foldit tools and features that will help binder design and Foldit. Uh, we were set back a little bit in July by some pernicious Foldit crashing, but we think we've got a handle on those issues and we should be back on track to have new updates soon. In the meantime, thanks everyone for your continued work on these puzzles and your patience while we get the new features up. Our third puzzle update is symmetric design. Now that we have the new buns objective in symmetry puzzles, we are very pleased to see a reduction in these problematic buns atoms in symmetric designs. We're currently running some more computational analysis of those designs and hope to get some symmetric proteins into the lab soon. We are also moving forward with another strategy for symmetric design. This strategy focuses on limiting the size of the interface between symmetric units. So why would we want to do this? When we test symmetric proteins in the lab, it seems like one of the biggest problems is protein aggregation. Aggregation occurs when we have too many exposed orange hydrophobic side chains on our protein. Orange side chains don't like to be exposed to water. So instead of folding properly, these protein chains will misfold and clump together randomly um, to form disordered aggregates instead of well-folded protein assemblies. Hydrogen bond networks are one way to solve this problem because we can replace some of those orange hydrophobic side chains with blue side chains that participate in a hydrogen bond network. Another way to fix this problem is to simply reduce the size of the interface between protein chains. If there are just a few orange side chains at the interface, we think we can strike a balance where the protein chains can still fold up successfully, 
but when they encounter one another in solution, they will still stick together as an ordered assembly. That brings us to this month's design of the month. This month we have a solution from Puzzle 1864. This is one of our limited interface symmetric trimer design puzzles. Um, and our design this month comes from Ninja Greg. Um, here we have a very nice symmetric arrangement of three helix bundles. Um, when we look at just the individual subunit, we see lots of blue residues on the surface and orange in the interior, which is very nice. Um, furthermore, uh, if we hide the symmetric chains, we see that um, the interface where chains come together, there are just a few of these exposed orange residues. Um, this is really nice. This addresses the problem we were just talking about with exposed, too many exposed orange residues. Um, all of these blue residues sprinkled on the outside should help this protein fold up correctly. Um, and if we look at uh, the symmetric interface, we see that there's very nice packing where the two protein chains come together. There's one polar atom that's buried when these come together, but that's okay because uh, it is satisfied. It's making all the hydrogen bonds that it needs to. Um, so again, this looks like a very promising design. There's uh, enough blue residues on the outside that it should remain folded. And there's also this nice small patch of orange sticky side chains so that this symmetric assembly will still assemble. This is great work from Ninja Greg. Look forward to seeing many more designs just like this in upcoming limited interface puzzles. While I have you, I want to look at one other feature in symmetric puzzles uh, that can, we can run into problems with. This comes up a lot in our symmetric trimer puzzles where we have three chains that come together. In these symmetric trimers, we will occasionally see instances of triangles of hydroxyls. These are serine or threonine residues at the center of the protein that form a triangle of hydrogen bonds. These seem to score pretty well in folded, but unfortunately, we don't think they're very realistic. The geometry of these hydrogen bonds is not quite right. We think uh, serines and threonines in this arrangement probably will not form the hydrogen bonds like Foldit thinks they will. We're still looking into how we might address this in the Foldit score function. Uh, but in the meantime, we would encourage players to try to refrain from these tight triangles of serines and threonines in symmetric puzzles. That's all we have for this month. As always, thanks for playing, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next month.